Certifications and continuing education. Certs are something that can both help you and hurt you, and they are helping and hurting different ways in different career fields. They can get a little complicated. The reason I'm bringing this up is I see that there's a lot of certification sponsorship that happens here in the school, and in fact most schools at this point, where if you get turned loose from your computer science degree or your technology degree and you've got a couple of certs on top of that, the idea is that it will improve your, the capacity to get hired, right? Okay, so in some of these fields in technology, certifications will really help you, and in some they won't. Some of the fields, we'll start with what they'll, what'll help and we'll do what will hurt and then we'll go career by career and I'll just take questions and you can ask me which ones are going to work best in your career field. So in the fields where certifications can help you, it's going to probably surprise you a little bit that they can hurt you, but let's just talk first of all about what, they, what good they do do for you. Um, two or three of the certifications that I have involve um, management. So I'm a certified Scrum developer and certified Scrum master, right? These are certifications through the Scrum Alliance. What they basically mean is that I gave enough of a crap about management to go through a training process. In almost any of the fields where you'll be doing management, training, project management, product management, or program management, you are going to want some kind of certification. The gold standard for certification that will help you more than anything else in a specific field is the PMP in project management. That's project management professional. How many of you have heard of the PMP? Okay, good. Are, are you intending to go for a PMP? Okay, good. There's also a certification that is previous to that one called a CAPM. That one is, is okay, but it's sort of like getting your associate's degree. It's like, yeah, I went to college. Mm. <laughs> so get to the PMP, and you'll need to do that after a certain number of professional hours. Of all of the fields in technology I can think of, and of all of the certifications, the PMP is the most closely related to actually getting a job as a project manager. Does this make sense? Why do you think that is? So in, I'm seeing blank faces, and I'm not going to force you to, to come up with something on this one. In most of the fields in tech where there's programming, uh, you can very quickly evaluate someone's capacity to do a job, right? In project management, how easy is it to look in someone's face and figure out where they, whether they can ship product? It's a little harder. Right, exactly. So if you don't have a way to tell whether or not someone is likely to have the kind of mindset that's necessary to pull off shipping a project, a certification like that expresses first the professional commitment over a course of several years to actually get certified in that field, but also ongoing and continuing education credits. It's probably the best certification out there in technology, if you want to know the truth. Um, there's, there's other certs that are great, but um, can hurt you in some ways and help you in others. The PMP just flat across the board. If you're a tech project manager, just go for it now. It's easier, okay? Get that instead of a master's degree, frankly. We'll get the master's degree too, because you want to be able to check that off, but get the PMP while you're doing it. That's very important, okay? Um, that's ongoing CLEs, or I'm sorry, not CLEs, uh, but continuing education credits. The same as you would do if you were like a doctor or a lawyer, where you have to continue getting education. To maintain your, your accreditation as a PMP, you have to continue getting training in updated project management methods. It's a good cert, do that one. There are other certifications that can really help you. In agile development, which is many of the very large companies, large tech companies, go. Um, there's, I, it would be fair to say there are two major schools of product of software development. One is waterfall, and one is agile, and they're two different schools of thought on how you push product out the door. Agile is starting to take over uh, as as the major project development. Um, what is, what is it? The PDLC, the project development life cycle. Okay or software development life cycle. And if you are someone who is in that portion of the field, you're going to want a certification in agile development. Okay, the, Those are what my certs are in. They also express that I care enough to, fun to figure out at least some way that it makes systematic sense to develop software as opposed to going, what the hell? Let's see what happens. Everyone take a ticket. <laughs> All right. That one has helped me more than it has hurt me. Um, there are people who look at those certifications that I have and say, I don't understand why you would bother to do something like that, just dev software. Um, I actually found that doing that course of training was really valuable to me on a personal level. Not necessarily because of the school of thought, but just 
that there is a school of thought that one would follow, right? I mean, you pick a martial art, by the time you're done getting to the end of it, you're going to be more physically fit and probably a calmer, you know, person who's more able to defend themselves, right? Does it really matter which one? I, you know, we can argue all day long. But in that same way, getting some training in how to manage product and software development, almost no matter what it is, is going to give you a little bit of extra credibility when you say you want to be a technical program manager. So, so I have you know, titles. We've all got titles in some way or another. There's founder and owner and CEO and all that stuff like that, right? But the, the technical name for my skill set is development director. That's, that's the actual name for the thing that I can do, right? Sometimes you call it development manager, but I'm, I'm like development director. Above that is just the place you are in the organization, not a name for your skill set, okay? So when you say you do that thing and that is your skill set, I have actual training in that. Go get some of that if you want to go into the management side of stuff, okay? What questions do you have about why I'm talking mostly about the human portions of this for the certs that matter? Does it make sense? It's a little hard sometimes to evaluate someone's people skills instantaneously. Sometimes the only thing you can do is use a proxy of whether or not they care enough to go get training in, no matter what it is, some kind of development management philosophy. Yes? Is this good? Awesome. Nodding heads. Loving it. Now there are places where certifications, and, and there are some certs in individual fields for companies that you have to have. There's uh, stuff like Cisco certifications for network and hardware management, for server techs and stuff like that. You'll have to go get those. They may or may not help you outside the exact job and exact certif certification requirement that, um, that you're going for. But often there'll be a prerequisite for getting a job in that portion of the field, okay? Like Cisco certifications are really important for all kinds of stuff like that, for getting jobs at Cisco, all right? IBM has certs, Intel, every big, big, big company has certifications of some kind, and often they're just used as a proxy for do you care enough to try. Now there are some certs that actually can hurt you in some fields. Um, there are places where the existence of certifications and having lots and lots of letters behind your name can be seen as um, the the impolite term for it is cert monkey, um, and what it means is somebody who's more interested in putting letters behind their name than actually doing the project. I've had a lot of conversations recently with people who they they want to try to demonstrate to the best of their capacity that they know a field, and so they keep doing education in it again and again, and they keep trying to level up by educating themselves and taking classes. At a certain point, no one gives a crap anymore. You have to demonstrate that you can actually pull off the technical task that you have been trained to do. And the second that you have a blog post up illustrating that you know how to hook up a local area network, a certification in saying that you know how to hook up a local area network is irrelevant. Make sense? So, questions about that? Yes? What petition did you sign up for? The opposite of what you want. Okay, I am really looking forward to reading that on the Slack channel in like 10 minutes because now I'm deeply curious. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. I am, I, I reserve the right to walk over there and like <clears throat> just die, okay. So a good example of a certification that I see sometimes people um, getting that can help you in some places and hurt you in other places in your same field is called a CISSP. That's a something, something, something cert security professional. Certified something. Anyway, um, t after a while you kind of lose track of all of the um, acronyms. What does CISSP stand for? Somebody, something certified internet security, something development software, security development professional something? What is it? Certified information Asian systems security, security professional. professional. There you go, okay. So it's a really expensive certification. Companies will often pay for their technicians to go get one. Paying to get one on your own is sometimes um, just hack the things. Demonstrate that you can do the stuff. That's what's going to get you hired to the good companies. Companies that hire people for their certifications in fields that are extraordinarily hands-on, like network administration, systems administration, security, in, anything in InfoSec, um, and I would say accurately in the top levels of software development or game development, like Python, C++ developers, they are attempting to hire for people who give a crap, and yet there is a better option for evaluating that skill set, which is have they demonstrated that they can do the thing. 
Does that make sense? Sometimes that, that corporate mindset carries a little too far when it comes to looking for an educational skill set without trying to find the thing, whether or not you can actually do the thing or not. All right. What questions do you have about when certifications can hurt you? I, I'm going to give you an example right now, and um, I'm going to try to be as polite as I can on this one. There are certain office applications out there that will provide you with a um, a certification in using them. Many of them are sponsored by local schools. To get those certifications, you almost would be holding your, if, to mention them on your resume after a year or so, after any kind of entry level position, would almost hurt you more than help you. Because it would show that you were just chasing down certifications in something people should just know how to use as opposed to have to get a certification in. That's not necessarily fair but it's, it's the way it would be seen by a hiring manager. Does that make sense? I'm trying to be as tactful as I can on this one. Okay, I'm sure you can take some guesses as to what kind of certifications I'm talking about. Very basic level certifications for I know how to turn the computer on. Don't put those on your resume. Go take the class if you need to learn how to do the thing, but don't tell people that you've done that. Just pretend that you have sprung forth like Venus from the half shell or Athena from Zeus's forehead, fully knowing every single one of the skills that you have right now. That will be more effective and efficient. Okay, so for which careers? Project management, I already told you, get the PMP. For any kind of technical development, get some kind of certifications for it, like Agile, like Scrum, like Kanban, anything along those lines. So now ask me what career fields you're going to go into and which certifications you should get. Raise a hand and start bringing them at me. Yes. What's that? Web design. That is a very good example of a place to not bother to get a certification. Just create a portfolio right now. No one cares if you have taken a class in web design because they just want to know whether or not you can design. And if you take a class and have no artistic capability, it doesn't matter, right? What about the web application? Web application development. That's another good place to just do the thing. There are certifications out there that will be relevant for individual companies. I believe that Microsoft has ASP.NET and C-Sharp.NET web application development certifications. And that's not a terrible idea if you want to give those a shot. Um, it's Make sure that you actually have the technical knowledge that goes along with them, but that's a good idea. For the more artistic stuff, it's the same thing as project management, except in the exact opposite direction. Um, they have no way of telling from looking at you or immediately evaluating your skill set, whether or not you can do the thing. So they just need to see your portfolio at that point. Can you artistically design web pages? If so, no one cares whether you went to school or not. OK, next set of questions. Yes. Web development. Web development. Yes, tons. Lots and lots of certifications for that. Um, the most effective web development kind of certification I've seen have been boot camps. If you can say that you're a graduate of like a six week or 12 week boot camp class, something like that, um, it tells someone who wants to hire you as a web developer that you're probably a pretty good bet. Does that make sense? Because there's like a hacker school in New York and Ada and Hackbright and Code Fellows. Code Fellows is the really good example here locally. If you do Code Fellows Python or Ruby web development class in their boot camp, that is an excellent way to get hired straight out of that certification. They will work their asses off to place you because they lose money if they don't, and they need to keep their percentages up. So boot camps, that is the way you go for web development, especially web application development. If you're doing the closed source as opposed to open source, then go for the direct company certifications. Try to get somebody else to pay for it, and you can always apply for financial aid. Most of these companies, if you flatter them a little bit, they'll find a way to get you shoehorned into what's going on. Okay. Open source can be a little more expensive because often there's no one sponsoring those classes. Many of the programs that will get you certifications are tied to things like internships and education. While you are in the school and enrolled and have a .edu email address, get every certification you possibly can that involves you getting a job afterwards. Not, I know how to turn on the computer and operate this office application, but I know how to do this in web application development. I know how to put a database together. Database administration certifications can be helpful. Okay, next question. Yes? And maybe some more about like data security. Or data security. Encryption. And encryption? End -to -end encryption? End in end encryption. Yes. There is no certification that exists that will tell someone whether or not you're actually good at end to end encryption. The CISSP is going to come close to that. If you want to know how to do end to end encryption, first, come talk to me, killer. 
Second of all, go do end-to-end -end encryption. Go figure it out. If you want to know how to talk to a cryptographer or you want somebody to pay attention to you, tweet me and I will make them pay attention to you. Okay? Next. Yes. Copywriting? Are we talking about like web content development? Yeah. Okay, don't call it copywriting. Copywriting means I'm checking your spelling for errors, not I'm developing out blog posts for companies to get paid for it. Web content development. That is a very good example of a place where basically nothing helps you except for a long, hard slog through building a reputation on a freelance site of some kind or another. And yet, if you can get to the top level of it, you will have so many people requesting your, your skill set on an immediate basis. You'll have people that will post up like, I got 50 bucks and I need three content pieces right now for my front page. And if you can churn that out in like 15 minutes, you'll make some really great cash and, have to, and work basically all you want. Um, you get to sites like Upwork or Freelancer.com. Yeah, it's not copywriting, it's web content development. Um, the transition point for you from web content to the next best career option is content manager or community manager for that, that combines some content production with some site. Game companies, stuff like that, they all need that human being who can churn out positive, cheerful, somewhat relevant crap on a day-to-day -day basis who uh, can also do things like understand the current jokes, pays attention to Twitter, blocks assholes on the forums, answers questions, is the human face of a small company. And in a company about 20 to 70 people, getting that gig as the community manager and content developer, that's a good one and that's the next step up for you. If you work your way to the top of one of the freelance sites, you'll start getting job offers like that. The, on general principle, by the way, if you have no education, you're going straight into your field, whatever, just go get established on one of the freelance sites. If you do a good job with your, contra uh, with your contracts, and you can do just a couple of them at a time, especially while you're in school, you'll develop that long history of having um, created good projects, of you know getting five-star reputation, stuff like that, and you can always step over into that if you want to. I will not pretend that it is not hard work. You will deal with assholes on freelance sites. But then there are people that go there, like I do, maybe once every couple of weeks or month, and post a job like, I need somebody to help me develop audio content, or go through this 2,000 you know, word blog post and fix it, or give me 17 ideas and what, one paragraph each on blog posts, whatever, stuff like that. Um, often I do a very highly uh, technically skilled job that's gonna take me a lot of time that I don't wanna do. Like, um, take all of the content on this web page and make it look fresh and tell me what to paste and where. That's the kind of stuff you do on those sites. All right, next question, field and desired certification. I think most of you already know what I'm going to say when it comes to any of the other fields. Like, I mean, if you're going to be a Python developer, go be a Python developer. The answer to certifications as a, as a um, hardcore technologist is GitHub. It's not certs. Yes? Flash in art. Flash in art? Okay. I think Flash is basically dead at this point, but there's still some people that use it a bit. So HTML5 is what you're looking for on that. Yes, you can get a certification in that. And I would go through one of the boot camps for it or one of the um, online seminars, education classes for it. Yeah, so take some time and really put some time into that because if you can create like 10 really sweet HTML5 sites and maybe one or two really designed artistic ones, get an award or two and that'll get you some work, okay? Yeah, it'll work well if you've got the artistic view. I saw a question down here. Uh, digital marketing. Digital marketing. That is one of those ones where you're going to do it for free for your cousins and your aunts and your best friend, and it's not going to mostly work out, and then one or two of them are going to hit, and then sooner or later you're going to get better at it. Um, digital marketing is, there is not a good entry into that field that doesn't involve you building the portfolio. Um, I was recently approached by a marketer who has a more, uh, by a recruiter who has a, uh, that I owe a favor to who has a more traditional marketing professional in her portfolio and she wanted to ask me, how do I get this man into digital marketing in the Seattle market? And she sent me this, this resume and it was like proven leader with skill sets of human stuff and drinking martinis like Don Draper, whatever. Um, and I was like, okay, that's, that is awesome. This resume doesn't mean anything to me. I need you to send me three facts on this human, which are three marketing campaigns that he has worked on, 
the percentage by which his specific effort raised the overall revenue of whatever product he was selling and one person that I can call at that company to verify that fact. Except those words don't belong on a resume. Except those words don't belong on a marketing resume because a traditional marketing resume um, doesn't mean anything to technologists like me. I've looked at marketers resumes before and they look like total gibberish. I, I mean apparently the words proven track record have actual meaning on a marketing resume. Blew my mind when I saw it. They meant that. They were like, this, but you have to take this seriously. Like, Proven track record? That's bullshit you say on the internet. What? Go. I worked for a digital marketing company now, mm -hmm. and I want to like, strengthen my skills and be yeah. valuable to the company. And I think a lot of it doesn't require trade to be like traditional yes. marketing. It's you know, heavily reliant on code and um, being a maze and making sure things are alive. DMA? Oh, uh, resource translation, language files, things like that. I get that. Okay, yeah. <coughs> First, it's really great that you're already in that position. Um, if you are trying to level up your skill set, um, you're going to need to broadcast that knowledge far and wide. Blog, tweet, get people interested in what you're talking about. Digital marketers, really good digital marketers, have a big audience because they create good content that people are interested in looking at, even if it doesn't serve any real purpose. So. That is the difference there, right? And what you can do with that because you are online is you can start measuring the actual response to people that talk to you on the internet. Like if you tweet out an affiliate link for like a book you love on Amazon and you've got a thousand followers and seven of them buy that book as a result of you tweeting that link out, that is a super amazing solid result for doing that, right? I would look at that and I would go, that is a human that understands how to digitally market. All right, and yet for this other professional who is who is going to try to transition over into digital marketing, um, the the request that I actually that I have him prove his skills by getting a revenue basis for what he had contributed to previous companies was taken as a profound insult. I don't think that's unrealistic any more than it would be unrealistic to go to a previous manager of a Python developer and say, "Hey, did this person ship code on time and complete an average number of bugs?" And they go, "Yes." And I go, okay, cool, sounds great. You know, we'll give them a crack. We like them. That to me was the same thing that I requested for this marketer, and and I got, you know, insult back. But I said I had a proven track record. What do you need me to prove it for? And I'm like, well, because I don't understand the words that you're using on your resume. I'm a very smart person, and that's gibberish, y'all. So, when you ask somebody to prove something, the closer you can get to proving it, the faster you are to getting a job. That fact. Like if someone said, I'm a digital marketer, want to see what I do? I'm going to tweet this out and you can watch the results pile up. Here's my audience in Great Britain. Here's somebody buying a book that I just told them to buy. If you can do that, that's how you're leveling your skill set up. Get your Twitter straight, get your blog straight, start spreading information, find some people to work with because it's going to get boring. Get on a couple of those lists for, con for funny and interesting content and don't automate it. Make it only and wholly about you. Be a genuine person and that will be how it will actually work. Digital marketers are like recruiters. 90% of them are kind of scuzzy. 10% of them are amazing and some of the best friends you'll ever have for getting your company and yourself working. Okay? Be 10%, don't be the other guy. All right, other questions? Any last questions about where and when certifications can help or hurt you and in what fields you should and should not be having them? If you're coding, get up. Yes? What's that? Application support, you mean like IT help desk? Well, that's uh, one of the certifications here. Okay. Application support doesn't mean words to me. It, it, that sounds like you're answering a phone, and I don't know why you would need a cert for that. It, I mean, are you... There's a, there's yes. A there's a degree and a certificate with that title. Yeah. Application support. Yeah. Okay, somebody send me a link to that, because I don't know what that means. I mean, it's either help... Right, it sounds like you're answering a phone. That's fine. I mean, there's there's a lot of jobs available at local companies doing that. The question is just, I don't know how you would prove that you do that job other than answering a phone and being nice and knowing what you're talking about. I mean, you have to be trained on the internal application in order to do any good. So getting a degree in it doesn't seem to make a lot of sense unless you're being trained in your college degree to work at a company in a specific one, which I'm not saying that happens locally, <laughs> but anybody else? Questions? Okay.